Okay, welcome to the third and final step in completing your ACI 2.0 multipod configuration. So we know in video number one, we did the IPN. In video number two, we set up OSPF adjacency between the spines and the IPN. And here we've discovered our pod two devices and you can see uh, that everything has been recognized and brought into the fabric. However, if you remember in video two, we under tenant infra we had set up an l3 out so let's go ahead and look at that l3 out and there it is and you'll notice right away that uh, even though ospf is up and adjacencies are working that's only the first part of it we need to complete the the product so uh, the the connectivity using mp bgp so you'll notice that we've got a fault on our l3 out and if you read the fault it's basically telling you the dreaded nw issues now when you see nw issues you should start thinking hmm what's wrong with my physical connectivity and the answer to that is in this case we haven't configured it yet and and when I refer to by physical connectivity is actually going and configuring the front panel ports of the spines Ethernet 1 slash 20 building VLAN pools AEPs interface policy groups switch profiles all the normal stuff that you would do when you want to connect something to the front panel port of any any uh, ACI fabric device so let's go ahead and, and, and do that particular part next so if, you, if you're familiar with ACI, you know we're going to do that under the Fabric tab, um, Access Policies. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a VLAN pool, and it's going to contain one VLAN. And if you've been paying attention, you'll know exactly which VLAN is going to live in this particular VLAN. I will make, mark it as static, and I will select VLAN 4. If you recall from the earlier videos, we said that you have to use VLAN 4 as the end cap between the spines and the IPN. So we're choosing VLAN 4. The next, th next thing I'm going to do is actually uh, instantiate um, uh, a domain. In this case, it will be an external routed domain that we will uh, attach this to. So we'll go ahead and create that and we'll call it mpod l3 domain. We have a VLAN pool that we just created. Uh, we haven't done an AEP yet, so let's go ahead and create it right now. We could do this here or elsewhere, but let's just do it now. And so we'll call this the mpod AEP. We'll enable infrastructure VLAN. Um, we'll say next. Uh, we haven't done the interfaces yet. We'll do those in just a minute. And then we'll say finish. Submit. So we've done the VLANs and domain part. Now let's do the physical ports themselves. So still under fabric access policies. Uh, we will go under interface policies. And we'll create two policy groups. Now notice in the 2.0 releases of code, you have a new folder here. You used to just have one. Now we have specifically spine poly group, policy groups as an addition. So I'm just going to very quickly create uh, two policy groups. You could probably get away with just one, but uh, some people prefer to have the most granularity for the most amount of control if you have to change something later. So I'll call this, uh, I'll call this uh, spine one policy group, uh, and I will attach it to the AEP that we just built in the previous step. Uh, I don't need to set any other policies here. We'll do that. We'll do the same thing for spine two. Attach it to the same AEP, not a problem. And there we go, we've got that particular part. So we've got uh, policy groups. Now the next thing we need to do is tell the system which interfaces on those spines are we actually using. So that would come under profiles. Again, we see an additional folder in the 2.0 release uh, called spine profiles. I'm gonna create again two profiles here. I'll call this uh, spine one ints and I will select my interfaces. And if you remember, we were choosing ETH 1 slash 20 on each of the spines. So that's what I'll call out here. I'll tie it to my policy group for spine one and submit. I will do the same thing for spine two. Interface selectors, same thing. It is also ETH 1 slash 20 in pod two spine. And we'll attach it to that policy group. This is all should be very familiar standard stuff for physical connectivity, but I included in the video uh, for a sake of completeness. So we've got that part. Now what we need to do is we need to finish all that up by tying it to a switch profile. So let's go up to switch policies. And again, we've got the spine profiles. We'll create a spine profile here and we'll select our spines. I'll call this uh, spine one. I'll call it spine 201, doesn't really matter what you call it, and I will select spine 201 and say update. 
um, I'll create a, a unique one for spine two. Don't have to in this case because I have symmetry, but I just, you know, again, for the most granularity. We'll select the interface selectors that we just built for spine one, and we'll repeat that for spine two. And we'll call this spine 202, select it, update, and say next, and select our interfaces there, and then we will say finish. Now, if we did this right, we should be able to go back over to tenant infra and go back under our L3 out. Uh, there we go. And there's one additional thing we need to do to get rid of the, the fault here. We can see our fault is still there, NW issues, is we need to attach the external routed domain here and submit. Once we submit those changes, we will see the fault go away, and that is exactly what we want to see. Now there's one more step uh, that we need to make sure we've got done. <clears throat> if you had an existing fab fabric that was up and running, it's likely you've already had this done. But since I started with a clean fabric, what I haven't done is I haven't done what I call housekeeping. And one of those things is actually setting up the IVGP route reflecting. So under fabric, fabric policies, let's go ahead and do that very quickly. Um, I believe it's under pod policies. Uh, policies here, we've got a BGP route reflector default policy. Uh, so let's go ahead and quickly set that up. And we will simply add our two spines as route reflectors. Again, this is standard stuff. Um, but for the sake of completion or completeness, I'm showing it. And so we've got the policy built. Let's go ahead and build a policy group. And we will call out our BGP route reflector policy default there. We've got the policy into the group. Now we need to finish that off by assigning it to the pod profile. And let's go ahead and go into pod profile default select our housekeeping group and we will now say submit now if we did this right we can actually check our work because at this point we've actually set up mpvgp as a control plane across both pods in our multi-pod setup uh, the way to do that really quickly is to go into fabric inventory and let's go ahead and look at the bgp processes running in each spine so if i go ahead and expand spine one protocols and we will see that I've got BGP here under BGP next hops. Oh, look at, remember those addresses we set up in the earlier video of 11, 11 and 22, 22. And then if we look at our neighbors, we actually see this is from spine one. Uh, we can see a neighbor, uh, 222, 222. If you remember, that was the loopback that we set up in the earlier video that is being referenced as spine two. And we can see we've got a neighbor, we can see we've got next hops. These other devices here are actually the leafs that are in pod number one. We can do the same thing with pod two uh, and make sure that everything is up and running. If we look at BGP, our next hops, there we go. And our neighbors, there's our two leafs in pod number two and there is our neighbor adjacency back to pod number one. So that's exactly what we want to see. I'm going to pause the video real quick and I'm going to push some tenant uh, configuration and show you one other thing that you want to check and make sure. Okay, so very quickly what I've done is I've just pushed some basic uh, uh, configuration into a tenant, in this case tenant common. I created a, a, a configured the bridge domain under default and you can see under the tenant common view under networking bridge domains, there is a multicast address uh, assigned to this bridge domain. In fact, Anytime you create a bridge domain, there's going to be a multicast address handed out from the Gippo pool that you that you created in the beginning. And uh, what we could do is if we go back to our IPN, what we should see, and let's go back and this is 225.0.169. Uh, if we look in the IPN, we do a show IP uh, M route. And that's exactly what we want to see uh, to make sure that PIM by Dur is actually working. We have a star comma G set up. Now, just to finish off, to prove to you that everything is working, I've uh, paused the video, I've pushed some tenant information again, along with some EPGs, I've done VMM integration very quickly, uh, and I've got two virtual machines. Actually, I've got two ESX hosts. One of those hosts lives in pod one, one of those hosts lives in pod two. And in fact, you can see here, I've got a VM uh, in my EPG called Silver on, um, on pod one, node 101, 102 over a VPC. 
uh, this is ESX 104. And then you can see on pod 2, nodes 104 and 105, I've got a different ESX server at dot .107 where I've got another virtual machine called Win8Silver. I've got them both in the same EPG. So if we actually uh, have a look here, um, we've got an IP address for silver, we've got an IP address for gold. Uh, they're both in the same EPG, so don't have to worry about contracts or anything. And if I go ahead and ping, uh, we can actually see uh, this is in fact working as expected uh, so if we go back to our fabric as our final check and we go into pod one spine one protocols and we look at our in this case our very simple uh, coop database which is your endpoint database here you can see we've got um, uh, looks like two pages there we go we've got our device there now if we go over to pod number two we should see the coop database match and have the entries for the endpoints as well. So protocols, coop, and look at our endpoint database and so far so good, there we go. So if those don't match, then you know that the control plane isn't working. So we've checked it a few different ways. We've checked multicast, we've checked our BGP neighbors, we've checked the coop database, and if all those things are working, chances are you've got a successful deployment. And that's it, that's the end of it all. You've got multipod working, this is the last video.